Okay, I'm John Curtis, uh, Fair Day Master from uh, uh, Gosford, Sydney, Australia. Um, I am going to just analyse two games. Um, one is the um, Bogo Indian, uh, a Bogo Indian game, and the other one, a Neo Grunfeld. So um, I'm just going to go into the archive here, and um, I'm looking for uh, Moloban. There we go, Moloban 2089. This was just uh, played today, um, and um, he's 2089 and uh, 36 moves. Just, just have a look at it. We're going to go into the analysis. Um, um, yeah, we're going to go into this game here. Oh, where are we? It's going to go into the... And this is the... Um, the oh, look at the accuracy figures. Looks like I've got 95% accuracy. And my opponent's got 52.9. But still, he's, um, you know, like he's nearly 2100 strength. So he's no fool. Um, he knows what he's doing, and uh, we'll just have a look and see what what what, go, what transpires here. Um, we'll start now. Uh, right. So black plays uh, knight to f six uh, to d four. Uh, I'm playing the uh, the black pieces here. And now white replies with c4. Now, uh, so we've just got the normal opening moves where knight try, uh, white's black knight tries to control the center. And now I play e6. And um, this is the, um, uh, the one of the first two moves of what's to be a Bogo Indian opening. All right, so knight f6. Now, if um, white had played knight to c3, we would have had like a, um, a Queen's Indian type game. But now we can play this Bishop check. And as you can see, it's got a little book next to it. So it's a book move. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, comfortable position for black to play in this variation. And he replied with a book move. And uh, I recaptured. Right? Um... You, you can just check the bar. As I say, the bar will show on the side of the board there. It'll show um, the black bar and the white bar, and that'll show who's 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 winning or losing. Uh, as you can see, white's got an advantage at this stage. So white recaptures and uh, still kept the edge out of the opening. And now black plays queen e7. My plan is simple. That's to play d6 and e5 and try to get uh, play on the black squares. So my bishop can, white, my white squared bishop can move. Good day, Diamond Leopard. So my white squared, squared bishop can move fluently uh, between the pawns on the black squares. As you can see right now, it can't move anywhere. Anyway, that's the plan, the long term plan. So it's always good to understand your openings to have a long term plan. Okay, now white plays knight to c3, and that's a, a book move. It says uh, g, g3 is uh, better. And now I play, I follow on with my main idea that I, I had before I even played bishop to b4 check. Right? It says d5 is better, but I don't like the position after d5. Uh, it's, it's a computer for you. Anyway, um, White plays, um, white's got the advantage here, as, as, as indicated by the bar on the left-hand side of the board. And uh, he's got a big star there next to his move. So um, he's played the best move there is on the board. So I play e5, and i got a star because it's the best move that I can play on the board. If I don't play that, he might play e5 and uh, get a big advantage. Anyway, um, he played d5. Now, um, it's... The, the computer says you should have captured that pawn, mate. That's what the computer's saying. Uh, and now black seems to be closer on the bar indicator 
to having a level game. So I play knight to b5 to d, d, d7, right? And then my plan is, you see the, the, the square there on c5, the c5 square here. And that's what that's where I want to occupy my knight. Uh, the computer correctly says that I should have played a5, and it was a better move. So I got a thumbs up for my move, but that uh, wasn't the best move. Um, and he gets the best move, and I get the best move. Whoa, we'll stop there for a second. Uh, right, just go back here a second. Right, so right, so I got I played knight c5, and he replied with bishop c2. We've got a star, best move. So I played a5, and that's to restrict the uh, pawns, the queenside pawns, uh, so I can commit some sort of operations. As you can see, if he was able to play b4 unhindered, he would have got an enormous amount of space. So black's, black's virtually forced in this type of um, structure to set up to play a5 to and, and to control those squares. Now, when you look at this position, um, what you should be do looking at, and when you're assessing it, sorry, what you should be looking at is... Uh, the, the knights of both players are placed reasonably well, okay? Now, um, but the bishops, let's look at the bishops. Now, white's bishop, you notice all the pawns are on white squares. And with the pawns on white squares, the bishop, the white bishop can't move freely. Now, that's the difference in the position. And I spoke about that earlier, that my plan was to play d6 and e5, and, and now you can see my, my long-term plan has come to fruition and my, my, my bishop on, on c8 has now got that beautiful diagonal, it's nice and open, can move freely, whereas white's bishop can't, right? But that's the difference in the position here. Um, but, but still, the computer says, the engine says that white's got a better position. So I play bishop to g4. I don't know why I'm threatening to take that knight off. After all, my bishop's better than his bishop. And the computer says, yes, it's not the right move. It's okay. You get a thumbs up, but g6 was a much better move. So how can you argue with the computer? Anyway, he plays queen to um, d, uh, uh, queen to e3 and just fortifies his center. And he gets a thumbs up for that. But the computer says you should have moved your knight back. Now I took I took the knight. I got the thumbs up for it. Uh, I, in actual fact, I, I didn't know what to do with my better bishop. I thought, what can I do with it? The the, um, the pawns are stopping me uh, uh, threatening anything. It's going to be hard to get breakthrough. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll just play with the knights. He's still got his bad bishop on c2 that he has to deal with, and maybe my knights in a sort of a closed position can uh, prove effective against his bishop. Let's see how the game goes. So he plays queen f3, gets a star, best move. And if you have a look at the bar on the so side of the board, I'll refer to that again, you can see white's still got the initiative overall in the game. So black's going to work doggedly to try to get an e even, even game. Just an even game. So I played c6. Uh, my plan was to, to take the pawn in the middle and then um, play, even if he swaps knights, my plan was to uh, just play my knight against his bishop. Right? I don't know whether that was a good plan or not, but the computer says, hold on a minute, he took the pawn off. Now, as you can see, that's not a good move. The computer didn't like that move. You got a question mark, exclamation mark. Which means, anyway, the, but the computer's given the barcode on the side of the board to black as having a small advantage. So I recapture the pawn and I get star, best move. We haven't got much choice there. Anyway, uh, when we assess this position now, we see that a new square has opened up for black. And that's the square on d4. Can you see that big black hole there on d4? Okay, this is all about getting an outpost or key squares, right? And the whole game, you'll see how the game progresses. He castled, he got a star, 
but black still, according to the engine, got the best position. And now I play, I've got a star for this move, knight to e6, with the idea of knight to d4. Now he went back, he got thumbs up, he should have played rook to d1, according to the engine. Okay? Now I don't want to play knight d4 straight away, that would be bad, bad, bad to play that now, because it's best to prepare things. Had I, had I played knight to d4 straight away, he could play uh, knight takes knight, I recapture with the pawn, and then pawn hits my other horse on f6, and you'll see the queen would be opened up along the long diagonal, right down to my castle. Okay? So you can't I can't play knight to d4, it loses. Okay? So I play c5. So if I do decide to play knight to d4, I can recap I've got a choice of recapturing with either pawn. So he plays rook to d1, plays the rook on the f file to d1, to be precise. And you can see black's got the initiative in the barcode. But do I put my knight on d4 now? No, it's too early. I don't have to do that. He's not threatening anything. So I look for a better move. And I come up with it just castles. It's a simple move. The computer says you should have put my knight on d4. So... I'm not as good as the computer. Anyway, he played queen e3 and he got a star. Best move on the board. I think, oh my goodness. He's doing well, but I've got to come up with an idea. So I thought, well, I'll play knight to g4. I know he can chase me away, but it looked like the best move to me in the position. And maybe I can just hustle him a little bit. He might go to the wrong square. But the computer says, it's a good move. He played queen g3, he gets a star. That's the best move. But you can see in the barcode, black still got the slight initiative. All because the bishop on c2 is on the wrong colour square. So I go back and I get a star for that. So I've chased him around a little bit, done nothing, and yet I've got a, I've got a best move, the star. In this position, my real threat is knight to h5. h5. To go and then hit his queen and then go to f4 because I want to eliminate the knight because I know deep in my heart that if I can get those knights swapped off, one knight swapped off, and be left with the knight against the bishop, the knight will be dominant against the bishop. So he plays h3 and he gets a little tick, but it's it's not the, uh, not not a great move because now he allows me this move knight to h. It's the computer says play knight to d d4, but I don't like it. I, I actually like what I played better than what the computer. Anyway, doesn't mean that I'm right. The computer's wrong. You know, like I'll, I'll bow to the computer's um, uh, strength. Anyway, I play knight to f4. Now he plays. He doesn't take my knight. The computer says he should. I wanted him to take the knight. So maybe I... Anyway, now what I do is I play knight to d4 and I get the big star. This is the position I was after all along. And now he plays bishop d3 and he gets a, a, a little star. He's only got a little star for that. But it's giving him a little star. Okay, so I play g6. Now, the point of that is to stop his knight getting going in on f5 but also to prepare the move uh, um, f, f5, push the pawn forwards, supported by the rook and the knight, okay? Because I've got to break through eventually, and I'm not going to break through on the queen side. Well, I can't see that happening just yet. So I just fortify my position over here and just see what, he, what transpires. So he played rook to c1, rook on the a file to c1. And he got a little tick. And now I'm playing king to h8. The computer didn't like that. It thought I should have played f5. And after, but um, the reason why I didn't was probably for the wrong reason. But the reason why I did was because I wanted my king off a white square. And I maybe I had dreams that he had some other attacking move. Anyway, he played bishop f1. The computer says he should have played g3. So I played f6, and the computer um, says, oh yeah, 
but maybe you should have went one square further. <laughs> anyway, he played G G3. He wants to chase my knights away, right? So I thought, well, I've got to star because I've got no choice. And then he comes in here and he plays knight to D5. And to all intents and purposes, doesn't it look like a natural move? I mean, I would have played that myself in that position more than likely. But don't forget, it's a three-minute game. And we're both under pressure. So I play queen to, to g7. And the whole idea is I want to play f5. I'm really keen to play f5 because I can't just sit there while he's building himself. Uh, he played, oh, question mark, exclamation mark. So I played it f5 anyway. I thought to myself, well, my e pawn's protected by the d pawn, and the queen protects the e pawn too, my e pawn. And I'm thinking, well, but his e pawn's only protected by his queen. And I'm also looking at e takes f4. e takes f4, I'm clearing that pawn, f takes e, uh, so threatening pawn takes king pawn, and then just opening him up on the f file. That's my plan. Anyway, so he takes the pawn, and I took with the pawn. Computer says I should take with the rook. And I can see where the computer is coming from, but I only got three, a few minutes on the clock. And um, but if I take with the rook, the idea is to double rooks on the F file and bring the rook on the A file into it and just power right through. So. I can see exactly where the computer is coming from this time, and we're in total agreement. So he plays bishop to g2. He should have played king to h2, but again, let's um, have a bit of pity on him. It is not easy when you're short of time. So I played rook to g8. I've got a star for that because I'm threatening queen takes pawn, right? Anyway, so he played king to h2, but... The computer says, no, nah, you should have played queen to f2. And there's reasons for that. Now I take the pawn. I get a star for that. He can't recapture with the pawn, can he? Because he loses queen takes bishop checkmate. And he can't recapture with the queen because of knight takes queen. So that only leaves him one move. Knight takes pawn. And he gets a star for that. But we take the knight, right? Now... Heaven forbid, um, this, is, this is a crazy position, but he could have taken my rook. I should have played rook to e8. Now, well, it, it's wide open at this stage. He played queen takes it's the clock. It's the power of the clock, of course. So I played knight hits. I forget about my castle down there. I don't care about the castle. I want to hit his queen in his castle. But um, we'll see what he does. He plays queen takes pawn. Right? And then here, stop for a minute. I'll give you, uh, I'll count to, to 10 or 15. I want you to fi find out what move you play. You've got 15 seconds. 14, 13, 12, 18, 11. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, what was your move? What, what move would you have played? Well, I'll show you what my move was. Rook to D. Eight. Now, I get a big star for that move, and I think that's the key move in the position. Because <coughs> his queen hasn't got a square to move to. Um, he can't go to c7 here because queen takes queen. He can't play to e5 because a queen takes queen. He can't play queen to f4 because a knight takes queen. And he thought, oh no. <coughs> Excuse me. He's thought, oh no, he's lost his rook. I can take the rook and if the rook takes back and then 
double question mark. Well, the computer sees it straight away. But the whole idea of that move was the deflection. Because a queen takes pawn check, king to h8, and queen mates. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that game. It was a Bogo Indian. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to go back into um, the archive. And I'm going to have a look at the last game I played today. As you can see on, the, on my games, 97381. This game was played on January the 16th, today. And I was playing Tempen. He's 2,118 rating, and he's from Norway. So we're going to have a look at that game now. Oh, wrong one. That's his profile, Tempen. Okay, so where's the game? Analyze it. There we go. Yes, as you can see, that game was played today. It was only played, actually, um, in the last 30 minutes, that game. Played it 30 minutes ago. And um, this is the, um, uh, what's his name? This is the uh, Neo Grunfeld opening, right? And I'm white on this game. It's the last game I was black, trying to give you a bit of balance, and this time I'm white. As you can see, I've finally got my rating up to over 2,100. Um, and uh, we're, we're playing this game now. Okay, so we play uh, knight f6, f3, g6, there, there, there. So we're both fianchettoing our bishops and developing, preparing the castle. And he plays c6. So I castle. And I've got a star for that. So there's two good moves in the position. I could have played c4. And I could have played castle. I, I, I opted to castle first. He castled. Then I played c4. And it gave me a little book book sign for it. And according to the bar, bar code, the bar on the white side, of, on the left-hand side of the board, as I described before, uh, white's got a slight edge. Not much in it. And he plays d5. And I, I think the position's very equal. I took the pawn. And I got a little book move for it. And he recaptured. Okay. So, I played knight c3. I get a, get a star for that. And this is about where you've got to start finding your moves. So, uh, I played knight to c6. And the position's pretty balanced. So, I threw my knight into e5. I'm just going to throw the knight into the mix. And if he takes the knight, I can recapture the pawn and, and take his d pawn, and, and we get probably a level gain out of that. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so he played a6, and he gets a thumbs up for that one. But e6 is probably more solid, according to the computer. <coughs> I, I took his knight off, and I got a star. But it says bishop g4 was another move. Bishop g5, I stand corrected. He took with the pawn. My plan is to just play bishop f4 and stop his rook going to b8, threatening my b pawn. Now, white's got an edge according to the computer, the bar there on the side of the board. So he played knight to h5. I think it's his only move. Because if he doesn't do that, if he doesn't try to distract me from my plan, uh, he'll get into all sorts of bother. I played bishop e3, and I got a little star for that move. And <clears throat> frankly, when I played it, I played it on instinct. I, I just thought, well, if I can just restrict his pawn going to c5, restrict his pawn going to e5, then that bishop, it looks like a pawn. It looks like a pawn. Frankly, if it looks like a pawn, smells like a pawn, it's probably a pawn. <laughs> anyway, um... He played rook to b8, the threat of my b pawn. Now here's my plan. Knight to a4. I'm going to occupy long term. My plan is to occupy and give his bishop hell, his bishop on c8 hell, by playing knight to c5. That's my real plan. But to do that, I have to play b3 first or something like that to uh, secure my b pawn before my knight can hop into c5 and trying to um, cause him some discomfort. So he played queen to a5, and he gets a question mark. He probably thought he was attacking my knight, because it's a three-minute game, isn't it? 
And uh, notice the barcode. Whoa, well, it's got a big, he's plus 1.53. Anyway, so I played rook c1 because he's not threatening the knight. And I'm just now threatening his c pawn. Threatening rook takes pawn possibly. Not straight away because he's got um, bishop to d7, which wins my knight on a4. But the point is long term, a long term plan uh, occupying the c5 square and targeting his backward isolated C pawn. So it's backward, it's backward of the pawn chain, and it's isolated because it's backward, there's no pawn protecting it, right? So in my mind, it's an isolated backward pawn to the pawn chain. Anyway, so he plays queen to b5. That prevents me playing my knight to c5. So I play b3 and get a star because I'm pre preparing knight to c5. You're going to like the end of this, this game, the, the theme that I use in Blitz Chess to, to confuse my opponent and to um, weave a little web, weave a little web so that I can um, uh, rope him in like rope-a-dope, like the old Muhammad Ali. Anyway, but you'll, see, you'll see when I get there. He plays knight to f6. He gets a star, so he's going all right, but he's... Position is deteriorating, so now I pop my bishop back out because the knight moved and it allowed, allows me to hit his castle. It was at this stage of the game that I'm starting to think, well, hold on, where does his castle go? And he plays rook to b7. And what I noticed, just quietly, of course, was that his queen is sort of boxed in a little bit. Um, and it hasn't got much scope for a powerful piece like the Queen. You would think that it would have a long rank or a long file or a long diagonal, but no, it seems to be very limited in its strengths sitting on, on B5. So I, I kept an eye out for that. I played Bishop to D2, right? And I'm thinking... Please, please, please hit my bishop with your knight. Please, please. And my dreams came true. So if you, if you pray hard enough, maybe your dreams will come true. So I took his knight and I got a big star. And then when he recaptured, he's threatening my pawn. Right? That's what he, th he thought. Ah, and then I open up and you're threatening my pawn on D, D4. But did he overlook something? Yes, he did. He had overlooked his queen's trapped. It's boxed in. It's got nowhere to go. If queen takes rook, the pawn with the knight recaptures. Queen takes knight, the pawn takes. He can't move the queen back to B6 because the knight takes there too. So his queen is trapped in the middle of the board. Anyway. That was the end of the game. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed that little theme about how we worked very, very hard from the opening set of the game to play that night to A4. And believe me, I'm one of those people that if I, I, I strongly state um, in my videos, I say, oh, night on the side of the board, the Springer Amranda Ring Shanda. Uh, the, the Springer, the Knight, uh, Umranda on the side of the board, bring Shanda, thunder and lightning and disasters. It's usually not good to bring your Knight on the side of the board because it's got very, very uh, much less um, influence of squares. And um, uh, so Knights don't belong on the side of the board in general play. But this was an exception to the rule. right? There's always exceptions to the rules. And, um, and when you get a thorough understanding of chess, you, you'll see these ex exceptions yourself. And uh, hopefully you too will have many enjoyable games just like this one. Thank you again. I'm signing off now. And I'm going to post this to YouTube.